Hello and welcome to Mountain Kids Online. My name is Caleb and I'm in the middle of a Bake Off challenge as we find out what it means to have patience. Patience is waiting until later for what you want now. It can be really tough to wait for things you really want, right? That's definitely true when you're baking. You have to wait for bread to rise. You have to wait to mix in certain ingredients. But the hardest time to wait is when things are baking in the oven. You want your tasty, delicious treats right then and there, but you have to wait for them to be ready. Of course, the toughest thing to wait for has got to be a batch of delicious cookies. Yum! I'm gonna go check on the cookies and catch back up with you here in a moment. But don't worry, we've got a great Bible story from our friends at Orange you'll hear in a few moments. Because first, we are going to sing and worship Jesus together. to wait for all the things that I want. Sometimes I kind of feel like it's just taking too long to get the things I want, what I think I need, but I know you know what's best for me. I'm gonna live what I believe. I'm gonna wait cause I know you're still working. I'm gonna have patience cause it'll be worth it. I'm gonna have faith. I know you have a No matter what may come, no matter what I go through 
You're never gonna fail me I will trust you with my heart No matter what may come No matter what I go through God, you are Never gonna fail me I will trust you with my heart you with my heart the bible it's 66 books of history stories letters and poetry that fit together to form god's one big story the epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us as we travel through the bible from genesis to revelation we discover people who met god and found their lives changed forever now for an amazing story inspired by the book of Exodus, chapter 32, verses 1 through 35. For hundreds of years, God's people lived as slaves in Egypt. They cried out to God, and God rescued them. He led them through the midst of the Red Sea to freedom in the wilderness. And that's where he showed his love and care by providing bread from heaven and water from solid rock. Three months later, God led his people to Mount Sinai, where they camped at the foot of the mountain in the desert. Moses was called to by God from the mountain. Say to my people, the Israelites, you have seen for yourselves what I did to Egypt. You saw how I carried you on the wings of eagles and brought you to myself. Now obey me completely. If you do, then out of all the nations, you will be my special treasure. Moses shared God's word with the people. We will do everything the Lord has said. God called Moses to meet with him on the mountaintop. Moses spoke to the elders of the Israelites before he left. Wait here until I come back. My brother Aaron and Hur will stay with you. Anyone who has a problem can go to them. Don't sweat it. We got this. No one can come up. The mountain is holy. Noted. I'll see you soon-ish. Have fun storm in the mountain. As Moses and his assistant Joshua began to climb the steep slopes, the glory of God settled on Mount Sinai like thick cloud and burning fire. I will give you stone tablets. They contain the law and commandments I have written to teach the people. Moses stayed within the cloud on top of Mount Sinai, talking with God for 40 days and nights. Meanwhile, back at the camp, the Israelites were growing restless. I'm so, like, over this desert camping thing. Yeah, that Moses seems kind of unreliable to me. Yeah, what if he's making up all the God stuff? You know, besides the cloud and the Red Sea and food from heaven and all that. Yeah, he's certainly taking long enough. Hey, Aaron, where's your brother? Aaron shrugged and pointed to the cloud that hovered over the mountain. Uh, you know as much as I do. We need someone to really take charge. A God we can see. A God who will lead us. Moses may have brought us out of Egypt, but he's just disappeared. Poof. What are you going to do, Aaron? Aaron was tired of the people's complaining, so he buckled under pressure. Ha <laughs> uh, ha. Well, uh... Give me all your gold jewelry. Aaron took all the gold the people brought him and melted it down. Then he shaped it into the form of a golden calf. Israel, here is your God who brought you out of Egypt. It's like so shiny. Well, when Aaron saw how excited the people were, he built an altar in front of the calf. Tomorrow will be a feast day. So all the next day, the Israelites brought sacrifices to honor a golden calf made out of their own jewelry. The people ate, drank, and danced wildly in front of the statue. Who wants to walk like an Egyptian, huh? 
Not me. We just got out of there. Thanks to this amazing calf. Back on the mountain, in the midst of the cloud, God spoke to Moses. Go down. Your people you brought up out of Egypt have become very sinful. They have turned away from what I commanded. Heartbroken, Moses and Joshua made their way back down the mountain. Moses carried two heavy stone tablets covered with the laws God had given. The two men stopped in their tracks. Wait, is that the sound of war? It's not the sound of winning or losing, that's singing. Moses and Joshua picked up their pace, scrambling down the mountainside. As they approached the camp, Moses saw the golden calf, dazzling in the sunlight. The Israelites danced wildly around it. Inconceivable! Moses was so angry, he took the stone tablets and hurled them to the ground. Stop! Stop this at once! The music and dancing stopped. Moses marched right through the crowd, right up to the golden calf. Aaron tried to sheepishly duck away, but Moses spotted him at once. What did these people do to you? How did they make you lead them into such terrible sin? Okay, don't be angry. You know how these people are. They, they said, make us a god to lead us. And? And then they gave me their gold jewelry. And? And I threw it into the fire, and out came this calf. Aaron couldn't look his brother in the eye. They both knew the true story. Why didn't you wait for me? The people are running wild. We've, we've become a joke to our enemies. Moses toppled the golden calf into the fire to burn. Then he ground the golden calf into a fine powder and scattered it on the water. Drink it, all of you. This is hard to drink. Oh. My stomach feels downright awful. God helped his people over and over. But when they had to wait, they forgot his goodness. They chose their own way. And the consequences weren't so golden. Moses was angry because of how impatient the people had been. Over and over again, God had helped them. God had rescued them from Egypt. God had led them through the wilderness. God even helped them find food and water every day. After all of that, when the Israelites had to wait for Moses just a little while, they forgot what God had told them about who he is and how to follow him. And they chose their own way. In the end, they had to face the consequences. If only they had remembered what's true about God, that they could trust God no matter what, that God is faithful and trustworthy and would never, ever leave them. If the Israelites had focused on those things, this story could have been a much better ending. We can make a better choice than they all did. We can choose to trust God and be patient. This is our bottom line for the day. When you have to wait, remember what's true. Let's pray and ask God to help us do just that. Let's pray. God, thank you for being trustworthy and true. Please help us be patient and avoid making the same mistakes as the Israelites did. When we feel like we can't wait, help us make the wise choice and not give in. Remind us of how loving and faithful you truly are. Thank you for always being there to guide us. God, we love you, and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, friends, looks like our cookies turned out great. Maybe you can bake some with your family this week. So make sure to stay connected on Mountain Family's Facebook page and check out the Family Guide to dive deeper into God's Word this week. See you next time.